Hello, everyone. This is Matt Hoots, and I'm with Chris with Swidget. Now, they've got an interesting product here. They've got controls for all different parts of the house, and I also just found out that they are actually partnering with somebody else that we like to work with, Panasonic. So Chris is going to tell us a little about their controls, how it can work with your house to make it more energy efficient, and also whatever gets controlled, whatever gets monitored is much better. And the only way for us to have a smart house is have one that's automated, automatic, and that's what these, some of these controls can do. All right, Swidget, such a cool name. I can't believe that it was actually not taken already, and you're able to incorporate all this to the logo. So, what exactly are you doing with all these these devices here? Well, glad you picked up on the name um, because it references both switching and widgets. And what we have are a series of smart home products, uh, wiring devices primarily, um, that are modular in design. And the cavities that you see in these products allow you to interchange different modules into the products just by a simple snap to click it into place, um, and that gives you different capabilities and functionalities. So each of our inserts here are wirelessly connected devices. Um, when you install them into the wiring device, that gives you elements of control, the ability to see the um, energy that's used by the device. And then we, asked, we added some extra features into them as well. So this one happens to be an IAQ sensor, looks at things like VOC, temperature, humidity, uh, and pressure. We have motion sensors, we've got standalone temperature sensors, and then we've got some convenience elements as well, like night lights, emergency lighting, um, and USB charging. In terms of the wiring devices, we have effectively the full gambit of products, uh, everything from a 20 amp receptacle, um, a 15 amp receptacle, to standard on-off control switches, uh, dimming switches, and we also feature a dry contact switch, which is a key component to being able to tie into home ventilation systems like ERVs and HRVs. Got it. So let's talk about um, a little bit. So what do, let's go through each of these sensors, what they do. You mentioned you've got VOCs and you've got some basically air, indoor air quality. So what exactly are you looking for? You're looking for radon, PM 2.5, humidity. Like what, what is it actually looking for? What is it sensing? So the IAQ sensor is looking primarily at VOCs, temperature, humidity, and pressure. Uh, we also have a product in development right now that will cover off the PM 2.5, PM 10, and PM 1 just by the, the very size and nature of the sensors that are required for that, uh, it has to be an external device. But that is something that is on our, in our, on our roadmap for 2022. Got it, so you set a pressure sensor, so does, it, does that automatically get kind of an ERV to get a balanced ventilation in the house? Like what is, it, what, is it, what is the pressure sensor doing? At this point, the pressure sensor is just there for an information purposes. Um, but yes, it will, as we continue to develop the automations and mature that side of the product, it will start to look at um, pressure imbalances within the home that tied in with uh, ventilation systems through Panasonic will be able to fix those issues. I, I think that's a great plug-in for makeup air. So if you have something like that in your kitchen, you know it's a pressure drop, you don't necessarily have a balance damper there, you can let your HVAC system know what's going on. So I'm, I'm glad exactly. to, to see that they're coming. Something else that I like about this product, looks like everything, uh, nothing is standalone where it's actually sitting on the countertop. These are all integrated into the existing electrical system. So you're using devices, switches that are already there. So it doesn't look like you have to rewire. You basically just replace a device if you're doing a retrofit and plug one of these in. That's exactly right. And because of the modularity of the devices, um, you're not subject to obsolescence in the way that you used to be. So these devices happen to be um, set up with Wi-Fi communications. Uh, we also offer a series of devices that communicate via Z-Wave, um, via Zigbee, in various stages of development, and we're also working on ones that have that cellular LTE capability for installations that don't necessarily have the internet or, or Wi-Fi infrastructure in place, particularly during the construction phase of perhaps a, a, a build or a home. All right, so I see we have a bunch of sensors, so where is all this data going, and like what happens with that data? So the data is used exclusively for running the automations, and in the cases where the devices are located, physically located in the host, those automations are run locally on the edge. So that data doesn't necessarily need to go to the cloud in order for that air quality sensor to turn on um, an HRV and an ERV. In the cases where you've got your sensor in a different location than the device you're trying to control, that information does need to go via the cloud. But basically you don't have, a, you don't have, to have a control panel or some sort of central hub in the house. It just communicates with your Wi-Fi, goes to the cloud, and can react accordingly. Specifically to the Wi-Fi devices, that's correct. With the Z-Wave or the Zigbee devices, they would con communicate via a hub, and those automations would be would be set up and run through the hub. 
And um, I know a little bit about those, enough to be dangerous. Can you kind of explain the different technologies that are in these as far as they communicate? You mentioned Wi-Fi, Z-Wave, and some others. Like, how do those work, and like, what do those mean? So, each of them are, are different communication protocols, um, each that have their own benefits over the others. Um, I, I'm not going to say that one is better than another. They certainly have their strengths and weaknesses. For instance, Z-Wave runs on a 900 megahertz frequency, which has better wall penetration ostensibly than, than Wi-Fi at the 2.4 gigahertz. Um, but, you know, Wi-Fi is more widely adopted. More people have routers in their homes. So if you're just getting started with this, you already have the equipment and the infrastructure to be able to quickly add devices to a Wi-Fi network. Uh, Zigbee and Z-Wave would require a hub, um, which is a little bit more of an outlay. Um, but once that's set up, they have their benefits as well. Now you mentioned renters, and I deal with a lot of our vendors, um, our commercial, multifamily um, sensors in those areas. So what kind of applications do you have for that? And it, is there a way to communicate back to the landlords, like, hey, by the way, this is happening, or can you solve some problems in the house with this technology? So we're working on some integrations with property technology companies that provide that property management piece. Um, so there will be an API that will allow them to access devices that they own within the scope of a, a rental property. Um, some of the key elements that I've heard from, from people that run um, rentals is um, humidity control. That's something that's a big, big issue for them. So having uh, a fan switch in the bathroom coupled with a temperature humidity sensor or an IAQ sensor can not only activate the fan to, to, to control that humidity issue, but can also potentially notify um, the property manager, uh, giving them an element to being able to protect that investment um, through the use of being notified of, of conditions that are, are less than ideal. So if somebody has a plug-in dehumidifier, you can, you can use this to control the outlet potentially if, if, it, if there's not a humidity sensor on it already. So. It sounds like this can also let the, these are, these are very good things because property managers, they lose thousands of dollars every year because something's happening in the space. This can prevent damage, can prevent mold. Um, there's other sensors out there for water leakage and stuff like that. So it seems like the industry is definitely going in the way of sensors and you guys have a great product. It looks like it's easy to use plug and play. Absolutely. And, and as, you, as you pointed out, it's going the way of sensors and being able to sense these things gives you the ability to do something about them but you need to know about it first. And so our product roadmap will continue to expand sensors, perhaps gas sensors with more specificity, um, looking at combustible gases or um, radon is one that we're gonna be looking at, not necessarily in this form factor, it would be a larger device, but to continue to add those pieces to the, the entire platform um, so that you have a better holistic image of what's going on in the home. Well, that's great news, you continue to add to this. And it looks like it's a simple platform where you can add these modules pretty easily. Absolutely. Um, again, I know Panasonic's one of your partners. They've got these plug and play modules that they have on their actual bath fans. Seems like this is similar to that. So with regards to monitoring, um, say when you get into radon and some of these other um, harmful gases that can affect your health, will you guys be able to eventually upload it to the cloud and see this on your smartphone? Absolutely. So we have an app right now that allows you to, to control and see these devices. Um, that data piece and the historical data piece in particular is something that we'll be expanding the interface to allow users to go in, be able to see that historical data, take a look at what's happened in the past with their homes and, and find ways of monitoring and, and, and mitigating the risks associated with some of these elements. So how are these sold? Is it, is it on direct to the consumer? Do they have to go through a trade partner, an electrician? Like, how do you sell these? So you mentioned the agreement with Panasonic. We partnered with them. Um, they, will, they will be acting as a master distributor for the products. Okay. Um, so you'll be able to source these products through any of Panasonic's distribution. Perfect. All right. Well, and um, so, so basically go to Panasonic.com, look at your product, or, or can you... Or do you have a website where they can research the product? www.switchit.com. You can purchase the product on there as well. Okay. Um, as well as uh, Panasonic as well through the distribution channel. And we're also carried and supported by Tresco Lighting, is another partner of ours. Okay, perfect. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. No problem. Thank you.